Hello, this is Priscilla Ratzel. I'm in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Fluid Art Studio. This is a 14 by 14 inch canvas with some Artist Loft paint in the middle of it. I'm going to do a funnel pour with some mixed up purely pigments mixed with vivid intense excuse me mixed with vivid vivid polypore and some GAC 800 and uh, most lately a little bit of art fluid to make it more fluid which is pretty cool I really like the art fluid I've just discovered how wonderful it is so I'm sort of putting it in everything and that's one reason why I'm going to use this particular configuration of purely pigments that I just mixed up yesterday because they've all got art fluid in them so they're a little bit looser which might make a difference it might not I don't know I haven't used them but once before this in a complete total painting and that was a swipe scoop spin and drag I do have some bubbles but I'm not going to worry about them now I'll worry about them later if I want to worry about them at all All right, I wanted to make sure I had paint all over my canvas, and I do. I am on my spinner, which hasn't been used for months except for yesterday for the first time. And I may actually use it. So I've got a couple of choices, and I want a puddle. I want to use black. I want to make sure, and I know this, I mixed this up at the end of last week, so... I hope that thing in the middle is a bubble. Yes. Usually I'd put a big puddle all the way around and then put it in, put the canning funnel, which is my version of an open cup, in. That's mead and black paint, mead and black acrylic paint. And I'm going to use a little bit more Artist Loft White, which definitely seems to dendrite things, which is kind of interesting, which might make it cool or weird. We'll see. I've got some Decorate Americana 24 karat gold I'm going to use also. All combinations are good experiments at this point. I have some pure, pure magenta, which I might come back to. And I didn't used to work for color art or be a color art affiliate. I am. Um, my regular mixes were all with Floetrol. I found some um, white enamel, which used to promote cells. Not that we want anyway, but I think I'm going to use some. And it's so old, it's years old, and I don't see any filaments in there. And knock on wood, I don't. I continue to not. This is the new Purely Pigment Cerulean C. Which has a little burr on top of it that I'm going to take out right now. I want to use some Dancing Fuchsia. You know what I actually really want? I've got some Sea Dancer, which is a primary element. So I might be breaking my... And then I've got Prussian Violet, which is another primary element. to the black plum and I mixed up when I first got my first few um, purely pigments I mixed up dancing fuchsia just in case it's not open and I'm thinking I'm going to risk some yellows. Come on, drip off. I 
this case would be the Mellow Yellow with Holly Berry. And put a little more white enamel acrylic, which I think is a deco art product. It's so old, I really can't tell you. And I said I would finish with a little more pure magenta, which is the purely pigments. And so I will. But I never put any orange in there, so I'm going to use the Vivid Intense Paroli Orange. I might as well call it a rainbow. And then because the Decor Americana 24 karat gold is loose, I can actually inject it in there with my squeeze bottle. Now hopefully I have enough room to do what I need to do. Usually I would put two of these down and I did bring out another ring. Do I have enough paint there? I don't know if I have enough paint. Huh. And I'm inclined to grab a Princeton Artel Catalyst spatula. Get rid of the rest of that paint. And throw that right in my water bucket. Now I didn't consider whether I was going to use an edge catcher or not. But I do remember from when I used to do this a long time ago. The torch helps make cells. And I definitely think the white enamel helped. I'm going to look for an edge catcher and I think I have a couple right handy. I'm not sure that's big enough. No, that's not big enough, but I do have another one that is big enough. Just that I wish I thought of it in advance, so I wasn't going to look for it now. Well, I don't care. If it's not big enough, it's not big enough. I'm going to try and be slow. I'm loving the design and the colors in there, which, which makes it hard to want to tip, but oh well. So we won't use the edge catcher until we have to. Gonna recenter our paint. It's gonna be quiet for a minute. I'm gonna have to get some more white enamel, I can tell. I really like what's happening here. I might want to put some more black back in because I really like how the black looked. Having a little edge catcher, even if you don't use it as an edge catcher, is still a nice thing because you can scrape paint off of it with a spatula. Put it back in the painting if you want to. And it also is good for protecting your edge. I see I've got something in there and I want it out now. Anytime you have little flaws like that, they will drag paint with them. Boy, it's been a long time since I did one of these. My question for myself is, can I beat, can the paint I want to flow that's at the top of this canvas catch up with the paint that's right next to the edge? That I don't really want flowing away. Neat patterns. Now my, M, my old MO is to squeeze the paint because as soon as it hits the edge catcher it starts to go down over a little bit and then when you squeeze it it goes back into the painting come off I see things that need to go away
I don't know what this is going to look like. I liked it along the way. I'm going to do the same thing again with the edge catcher. And of course if I hated it I could do whatever I want, which is wreck it with skewers or put chain in or It seals up pretty well. I can even scrape it down. I really am going to miss the black when it's gone. Those are bubbles. That's not. I really want to put some black back in so bad. You can also squeeze the paint down. So it forms a, a lazy river, tip it over, squeeze it again, scrape it away. Rather large objects should be removed. I like how that white is coming back into the painting. So this, at this point it's instinctive composing. I don't actually want to take anything off the edge catcher and put it back in. I do wish the bubbles weren't so prevalent. I'm hoping my head isn't in the way too much of the time. It's not a fast process. I don't know if I'll be happy when I get rid of that white negative space in the corner or not. really kind of liked it. It's different. Wipe off along the edge. I still can't save my silicone mat from getting painty. But I can take the paint off my edge catcher which I could have left and used for something else because it was beautiful. I got most of it. It was worth the risk. Where else? Doesn't feel like this turntable wants to spin anywhere. I kind of want to put some black in like I was talking about. Did I hide it on myself? Not really, but sort of. So you could do whatever you wanted to with that. You could swipe it in, you could chain it in, you could blow it in with a straw. Let's try that first. It's making some nice cells there. I don't regret having done that at all. Sliding away, probably into your view too. I like adding spirals with a straw. My paint up here rather heavy and I should tip it off but I do use GAC 800 by Golden in all of my paint mixes which should make it okay.
grab a skewer or something like a skewer. That's not bothering me, but it does make me want another spiral down here to match it. A couple spirals never hurt anybody. We'll torch it one more time and then we'll say good goodbye. And uh, I should tell you, I have 33 playlists, 100 videos on the niche, and they're also organized by topic and genre. So if you like a particular subject. I've got a few cells in there, but I lost a lot of them. I don't think it's the purely pigments. I definitely think it's the old cell, the old um, enamel. I kind of want to cover this corner over here. Use some of the paint. that I have to spare. Alright, I'm going to try and shimmer this at you and I wonder, I've got like no seconds left. Well, I, that's not true. I have a few seconds left. And I want to keep spiraling. That's the only problem. I might fix a couple of gaps along the edges. I do love funnel pours. They don't look like anything else. And I definitely could have swiped up through and it would have been okay, but I like it the way it is too. It's actually beautiful. I love you guys. I hope you come again. Please um, please give me a thumbs up and when you watch videos of mine all the way through, you tell the YouTube algorithm that you would like me to be able to save my channel. And that would be lovely. My paint pouring recipe is below. Show more on, in the description underneath the video along with my Amazon link where you can find my two books, Because I Can and Unlimited Possibilities. The first and the second hundred videos I made for YouTube. And um, I give lessons at the house in Spring Hill, Florida. My email address is EASPB and the word gallery spelled out at gmail.com should you have inquiries. Uh, I, give, uh, I do sell my artwork. Thank you guys for the kind words in the comments. You keep my morale boosted and I appreciate the donations through PayPal and Patreon. And I mostly very much want to thank all of my members for for keeping my channel alive and uh, I hope you're enjoying the over 200 videos in the members only library. My community board will show you tomorrow's video. I post at 2 p.m. right now Eastern Standard Time and under the video you'll find Spring and on the link tree you'll find Pinterest excuse me Pixels.com Fire in America. You'll also find Pinterest but uh, you can have anything that I have created added to uh, the merchandise at those locations that they sell. This is absolutely fabulous. I'm loving this. And uh, I guess I will see you guys in on whatever I've forgotten. Oh, questions are welcome and encouraged. And uh, whatever I've forgotten, you'll see in another video. And I hope to see you soon. Bye for now. Priscilla out.